untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. For now, we're gonna check out some Historic Brawl. I believe my patrons voted for a Siona deck. So let's build a sweet green-white aura deck. So Siona, Captain, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two legendary human soldier. When it enters battlefield, look at the top 7 cards of your library. We may reveal an aura card from among them to put into our hand. And then whenever an aura we control becomes attached to any creature we control, we get to make a 1-1 token so that gives us more bodies to use our enchantments on. Alright, so step one, of course we're going to be looking for some auras to put in the deck. Alright, so let's go over all the auras. So let's see, does this trigger off like a pacifism as well? No, it's only creatures we control. We could still include a few pacifism-like effects, of course, to have some removal. But we're mainly going to be focusing on boosting up our own creatures. So... I'm just going to put all the ones that are remotely playable in my deck. And then... We can always uh, make some cuts afterwards. Should probably put on the not collected filter, just in case. So I'll put some pacifisms in there too for now. I guess this is a way to re-trigger Siona in the late game. It doesn't prevent blocking though, so I don't love it. Punishment's probably fine because it shuts off abilities. Knight's Pledge. Classic pacifism. Kind of like the Ikoria art. Rune of Sustenance, Sentinel's Mark, Spectral Steel. Probably not going to play 3 mana pacifisms. Uh, Fates Fetters. Maybe. It's probably just too pricey. Angelic Rewards probably too expensive too. Although maybe. I'll, I guess I'll add it for now. Celestial Mantle, double our life total, seems a bit on the expensive side, I'll add it for now, but probably getting cut. Transformation, I guess it's pretty good against opposing uh, commanders. Gotta go with the uh, Theros art. Do we want talents? Probably not. Blessing's fine. Could play Haven. Ancestral Mask is one of the nice additions that Historic gives us compared to Standard. Cartouche could be fine. Hydra's Growth, probably not gonna make the final cuts. Same with Mantle, maybe. I'll just add all the remotely playable auras, and then we can always uh, take them out later. There's some expensive ones that are probably not going to stay in the deck. Alright, so these are all the auras. There's a lot of them. This is definitely too many, but uh, that gives us a baseline to work with. Alright, so now that we've got our auras, what's next? Cards that benefit from auras. Maybe whenever aura. And then search for... I guess this works. So Spirit Dancer, of course. Sram. Uh, let's see, Dawn Evangel. Whenever a creature dies, if an aura we controlled was attached to it, returns a creature back. Yeah, it's probably not going to be relevant enough. Um... Halvar gives our creature double strike. So that's good. And Root of Horns might be good enough. 
All right, so we've got a few creatures that benefit. All right, next. The champion, of course. Both champions, the Runeforge and the Satessan champion. So now we want to look for Constellation. So Archon of Sun's Grace. Uh, Nassian Wanderer is probably playable. Gives us a two mana play, hits our land drops. And we want Favored of Iroas, maybe. So these are the more playable ones. I, I guess Wayfarer could be good too. Next we can look for cards that benefit from enchantments. I guess we look for creatures or just non-enchantment cards that mention enchantments. So what do we like? Well, I'll say it for protection. It's probably worth it. Same with Carmetra's Blessing. Not seeing anything else too exciting. Transcendent Envoy for the cost reduction seems useful. Same with the Starfield Mystic. So these are kind of staples. Stonehaven Pilgrim could be worthwhile. Turns into a 3-3 life linker for two. Seems good enough. The Blessed Spirits is kind of borderline playable, maybe. I'll add it just in case. And then... What else? Heliod, maybe. I think the tutor is going to be too slow in this deck. We're not really looking for one specific aura. Now, the Moonblast Cleric, on the other hand, I don't hate, because it at least gives us a creature that we can attach that aura onto. So the Moonblast Cleric could actually be good enough. Wondering if Teleportation Circle is also worth it to flicker Siona and give us more auras, maybe. Uh, Starnheim Courser making things cheaper. It is three mana to play it, which is kind of pricey. But I'll, I'll add it just in case. And... Probably no Archon. Then Destiny Spinner is probably worth it in green. I could make a case for Herald. Probably a little bit too weak. And then in the gold card section, Seder Enchanter, of course. Gonna be excellent. Calyx. And yeah, maybe Dromox's command is good enough, but we can take a look at the gold cards later. All right, so seems like a good starting point. What's the next section of cards we want to look at? Probably just good green-white cards that are good no matter what. So Shalai is probably one of those. We'll add the dual lands in a second. Appeal to Authority does have a bit of synergy if we manage to make a lot of tokens with Siona, but I don't think we really want to be like a tokeny deck. The tokens are mostly there to give us something to enchant in case we run out of creatures. So, Command is decent interaction even if it doesn't have any real synergy with Siona. I'll add it just in case. Uh, let's see, prepare to fight. Probably not. Don't think we're going to have a lot of life gain synergy. Knight of the Reliquary isn't bad. 
but also probably not synergistic enough. Let's see, what do we think of Renegade Rallier? Could maybe get back uh, an enchantment from the graveyard, although enabling Revolt is kind of tricky. Then what else? I don't hate this uh, card, just because Double Strike pairs so well with enchantments to make it bigger. And gives us two bodies to potentially enchant. Mirari's Wake is difficult to pass up in any green-white deck. And I guess Trostani might be good enough just because it does still pump up the tokens we get from Siona and it's a good individual card. Although I could see cutting it as well. And then Ajani is also pretty good since we have a lot of permanence in this deck. So the plus two is gonna draw a lot of cards. Although I don't know how many of these expensive cards we're going to end up playing. Alright, Season of Growth, yep, that's a good one. So I guess the next category of cards is whenever targets. Yeah, Siona only finds auras and not just any enchantment. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of cards we're interested in. I guess the heroic cards are somewhat synergistic with Siona, but I don't think any of them are playable. So yeah, Season of Growth is a card we want. Essentially draws a card whenever we enchant something. Difficult for the opponent to remove. And then... Don't think we need Nissa in this deck. Okay. And then... Uh, Heliod's Pilgrim, yep, that's a good one. Again, creatures that find auras I'm fine with. Cards like Idyllic Tutor are probably too slow because they don't give us a board presence to then use those enchantments on. Hexproof creatures, the problem with that is that there's no cheap hexproof creatures on Arena. There's no Slippery Bogle or a Glade Cover Scout, luckily. But uh, yeah, the, the hexproof category leaves much to be desired. If we take a look, it's very narrow hexproof with hexproof from black, for instance. And then mostly cheap protection spells, which you know, do have their place in a deck like this, but we don't want to play too many of them, otherwise we risk our deck just um, drawing too many pump spells and not enough enchantments. Paradise Druid is good with Vigilance, and we do have a few enchantments that give Vigilance, so that's maybe worth considering. I don't see anything else that I really want, maybe a Blossoming Defense or Snakeskin Veil. Could be worth it. I'll add them for now and we can always remove them later. Yeah, like the the real hexproof creatures that always have hexproof kind of start out at 4 mana, which is usually too expensive and slow to set up. Although, you know, they can have their moments if you're playing against a mono black deck, for instance, then Vinemare is going to be great. And then, yeah, there's a Jungleborn Pioneer, which makes a 1-1 Hexproof token. Which can be a consideration, although could also end up being too slow. Now, we do have some 2-mana indestructible creatures. Those I'm a lot more interested in, so Adanto Vanguard and... And uh, the Hallow Blade. These are... A bit better since we can play them on turn 2 and turn 3 already start enchanting them and they have some built-in protection. So those I like. And then Selfless Savior is also probably worth it as a creature we can play early to preemptively protect our creature that we're gonna go all in on with our enchantments. So I think that covers most cards we want. 
Toski could be cute too, because it does synergize with the tokens from Siona, and it does give us an indestructible creature to maybe enchant. So I don't hate Toski here. All right. Uh, Donitha might be worth it too, yeah. Although, let's see. Yep, it also counts Auras. So I guess now we look for cards that mention Auras that aren't enchantments. Maybe I missed a few. Yeah, I guess I just missed Donitha. All right, so that's good. And then... No, Cathar's Crusade. I could see the synergy with Siona. My main concern is, like, we play Siona, she dies. She's pretty expensive to play. By the time we get Cathar's Crusade online and start making tokens, it's kind of slow. And for outside of Siona, not making a whole lot of tokens. But we'll see here. We might not have enough creatures here. I've got a decent amount, 29. Might be able to cut some of them, but let's see here. I like my 1-drops. Yeah, the 2-drops all seem pretty good. Could see cutting a Blessed Spirits. Favored of Aroas. Courser might be too slow. And is not as powerful as Danitha, which comes with a bunch of keywords. We've got our three drops that draw additional cards. Shalai seems good enough. And I could see cutting Trostani. And then in the non-creature section, and there's a lot of cards we can potentially cut. So I'm probably gonna hang on to most auras. I like the Carmetra's Blessing. Blossoming Defense I could see cutting. Uh, I think Snakeskin Veil is probably better than Defense. So if we don't need all the protection spells, we can maybe get rid of uh, a Defense. And then a 2 mana. In terms of pacifism effects, we have compulsory rests, we have punishment, and we have actual factual pacifism. So, yeah, I think I like all of those just to have a little bit of interaction, but we probably don't need to play more. Conviction is a way to re-trigger Siona and our various creatures that benefit from enchantments entering, so I don't hate it. This is one of our weaker enchantments, but it does have flash. So I guess it plays well with our protection spells like uh, Karmatra's Blessing, for instance. Sentinel's Mar good with Paradise Druids. This is basically just a Knight's Pledge. I guess Transformation's one more removal spell that's probably worth including. And then Haven we can find with Siona. Dromoka's command is cuttable. Bounding Gold's probably too slow at three. Hydra's growth is also kind of on the slow end of the spectrum. I guess Mantle might be good enough. These are expensive, but they are quite impactful, so I don't hate them. And we do need to have enough auras for the deck to function. I like Mirari's Wake. Celestial Mantles may be a little too expensive at 6. Although it does make racing very difficult for the opponents. It's just that getting to 6 mana and potentially needing to keep up a protection spell could be difficult. Trample's a nice keyword to have, and this does have flash, so maybe proportions is worth it. I don't know, it's it's hard to make these last couple cuts. 
but I'll, I'll add it in the maybe pile. Same with the uh, growth and classification. I don't hate a Johnny, which gives us a bit of removal and card advantage. So if we were to make these cuts, then uh, these are kind of the cards I'm looking to potentially cut. And then I guess I need to cut even more cards because this is not enough lands, is it? This is... I guess it's close to enough. Yeah, we probably want around 38 lands, is my guess. At least, so I need to cut a few more. So yeah, I think we're cutting all the cards in the maybe pile. And this leaves us at 100, but I do want to make room for a few more lands. So speaking of lands, let's add some dual lands to the deck as well. And then we'll make the final few cuts. So filter by dual lands. And uh, for Historic Brawl, if you want to consistent mana base, you pretty much have to play all the tab duels that are available. So that includes some pretty bad ones too. I don't think I'm playing the Strongholds. I should probably craft the Scattered Groves. Uh, Guild Gate, sure. Some Petal Grove, Temple Garden, Temple of Plenty, Tranquil Expanse, and then, of course, can't forget about our Fetch Lands. So, Fabled Passage being the best one. And then we have Thermorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds. And am I missing anything else? Command Tower, of course. And Arcane Signet is probably worth it as well. Tome of Legends could actually be good enough in this deck since we are playing a relatively cheap commander and sometimes we're planning to attack with it. Although there's also going to be the scenario where we play, let's say, Nadanto Vanguard or the uh, Seasoned Hollow Blade, and we're going to want to enchant or two drop instead, even with the Siona in play, just to generate those tokens. But we're going to want to go all in on a creature that we can at least protect. So that does make the tome a bit worse. So I don't think I'm going to end up playing it. But uh, it is a close call. Then we can take a look at some utility lands as well, like the various castles. So let's scroll down the lists. Get past uh, regular basics and get to our utility lands. So Castle Ardenvale is probably good enough. Cave of the Frost Dragon. Are you worth it? It's pretty expensive to activate. Don't think it is. Well, it's definitely close. Something like Shafat Dunes could be good with the tokens from Siona, but it's a pretty narrow use case and it does cost life to make white mana, so I don't think I'm going to include that. We've got uh, a Thriving Cycle of Dual Lands, which we might want to include as well. So Thriving Heath and uh, the other Thriving Land. Anything else here? Any of the dual-faced lands? Sejiri Shelter might be worth it. Emiria's Call probably too expensive to cast in this deck, which is relatively low curve, which is also a strike against a Jani. And it's possible that Mirari's Wake is just not, just not necessary. But it does also combo with the 1-1 one -one tokens to an extent. Yeah, I don't think I need Lair of the Hydra. There's a Thriving Grove. Could consider Florahedron. And then that's probably about it. Don't think we can afford many colorless lands. Although Field of the Dead is always a consideration. 
in uh, Commander, of course. Alright. Whenever we cast an enchantment, there's Enchantress's presence, which I missed. It's probably worth it. Don't think I want Primeval Bounty. There is Sigil of the Empty Throne as well, which might be worth it. And then there's whenever enchantment enters, which is basically Constellation, but there might be some non-Constellation cards that fit that description. Don't think I want to retreat. Blast Sanctuary, probably not necessary. Don't think I need Cathar's Crusade. Probably not enough creatures for Guardian Projects. Divine Visitation is pretty cute with Siona, but again, I don't want to rely too much on the ability to make tokens, in case we don't get to keep our commander around, so I think uh, Visitation is better reserved for a real token deck. Alright, so let's craft our Scattered Groves. Add some basic lands until we get up to about 38 lands total. And do we need snow lands in this deck? Let's do a quick search for snow to see if there's any snow cards worth playing. A Blizzard Brawl wouldn't be bad, but isn't all that important. Cards like Into the North, two mana ramp spells are always valuable in Commander. Although. We also have a few 2-drops we actually want to cast on turn 2, like Vanguard, like Hallowblade, Spirit Dancer, Sram. So sometimes we will have a 2-mana play available, although other times having that 2-mana ramp could enable a more explosive start. So I don't think we need Snowlands. So we'll just go with... Uh, Unhinged lands, which I like. So this is 32. Need a couple more. So this is about 38, which should be good for this deck. We are skewed more towards white than green. And uh, looking at our curve also confirms that. So we might want to skew slightly more towards white than green. Although we can always fix this once we're finalizing the deck. So... This is 108. So I'll make about 8 more cuts. I think Ajani's gonna go. Maybe a bit too pricey. Even though I like it in theory. So this, this is the difficult part. The final few cuts. So, let me take a look how many auras we actually have. 34. So about 1 in 3 cards in this deck is an aura. And Siona lets us take a look at the top 7 cards. So this is where we can pull up the hypergeometric calculator. So, for those that don't know what it is, it's basically a way to figure out your odds of drawing a card when looking at a certain number of cards. Might not be perfect math here, but it's a good approximation that I'll sometimes use when building decks. So we get to look at the top 7. So population size 100, number of successes 34, sample size is 7, and number of successes in sample, we're happy if we hit 1. So right now, with 34 auras in our 100 card deck, of course this is a rough estimate, we have about a 95% chance of hitting at least one aura with Siona's ability. I think we're happy with at least a 90% hit rate, so we can afford to maybe cut a few auras if we really have to. Let's say we drop it down to 30. Then we're still at a 92.5% chance, so we can easily cut a couple uh, auras here. Yeah, it's a rough estimate because we're not taking into account or opening hands, how many cards we've already drawn, etc. But for a rough estimate, it's good enough. Alright, so let's have a look. Sixth Sense is one of our weaker auras right now, I would say. A 
cutting lands is a slippery slope. You're like, these last few cuts are too difficult, why not just play fewer lands? But you're quickly gonna end up regretting that decision after a few games where you get stuck on too few lands. And especially in a format like Commander, where you can always play your Commander with an additional tax, it's never a bad thing to have a lot of mana available. Especially when, in this case, our Commander draws more cards with the ability. So Pilgrim's potentially cuttable 2-drop. It is possible we have too many lands for sure. Our curve is relatively low and we do have some cost reduction built into the deck, but as a rule of thumb, cutting lands is a last resort and there's still some pretty weak cards we can take out the deck. We also have a lot of cards that are functioning as card draw engines like Season of Growth, Spirit Dancer and SRAM. And for those cards, it's also important that we can keep hitting our land drops to fully take advantage of the extra card advantage they provide. Otherwise, we're just going to be stuck casting one or two cards per turn. So what are some of our weaker auras, maybe? Possible I don't need the Moonblasts and Heliot's Pilgrim. I guess we'll cut the Moonblast and keep the Pilgrim, which can at least put it into our hand. So it's card advantage. Can also take a look at our curve to determine if there's a spot in our curve where we have too many or too few cards. So we can adjust accordingly. I'm not in love with Druid of Horns because it's like a 4-mana creature that we need to untap with before we get value from it, which is kind of slow. Much better if we can play our 2-drop and then leverage that instead. So I think I'm okay cutting the Druid. Toski I still kind of like, because we don't have to enchant Toski itself necessarily, but it is an option, and it does also play well with Siona, potentially. The Sigil... It's not an aura itself, so we can't find it with Siona. But it is pretty good once we get it in play. It gives us a bit of staying power against control decks. So I don't hate Sigil. And then do we need Mirari's Wake? It's very good if we can kind of go off with one of our card draw engines. It's probably not necessary in a game where we're not drawing a lot of extra cards. So... Yeah, I think I'm still going to keep the wake just because I like the cards on a deeper level. Alright, so three more cuts. Could maybe shave one or two lands. Yeah, we do also have shelter as an extra land, signet, and uh, our wolf Hollow haven to make extra mana and a lot of cost reduction from our creatures. So at this point, I think we can afford to take out a land or two. Taking a look at our color distribution again, just to make sure it hasn't shifted too much. Looking at our double colored cards, we don't have a ton of them, but they are mostly double white. But given all the dual lands, we shouldn't have too many mana issues. And we're fine with a decent number of tapped lands since we're not doing much on turn 1 and turn 2 anyways. So playing a tapped land in the early turns isn't a huge cost, unlike some other decks that might want to curve out more. Alright, so one final cut. How many auras do we have left? Currently have 33, so the hit rate on CO9 is still in the 90% plus, which is good. How many ways do we have to give Vigilance for Paradise Druids? I mean, I'm probably still going to play the Paradise Druids regardless, but I'm curious. So, Sentinel's Eyes, Sentinel's Mark, and Knightly Valor, and On Sarah's Wings. So we do have a few ways to combo with Paradise Druid here, which is good.
I kind of like Halvar because of the ability to move our auras around and uh, also still gives uh, double strike, right? Counts both enchanted and equipped. So Halvar seems good enough. Probably not going to cast uh, equipment half very much, but the creature half should be good. Could play Ruined Crown, although we're not really an equipment deck, so I don't think we need it. So I'm probably mostly looking at cutting some of the more expensive cards at this point, especially after cutting two lands. And uh, I think could be Drizzt, maybe a bit too expensive to play it and then enchant it afterwards. Although I do like the double strike in theory. Well, it's got Drizzt. All right, I think this is uh, the final build. Definitely possible that we missed a card or two, but uh, if we find out, we can always adjust the deck later, but pretty happy with where we ended up. Now picking a sleeve, also very important. Make sure not to skip this last step. That's where all my good luck comes from, is choosing the right sleeve. It's kind of like uh, in Harry Potter where you get to write wands. Every deck has a right sleeve. And uh, I'm getting some good vibes from the Collected Company sleeve. All right, see you in a brawl. Historic brawl. All right, I think we're good to go. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Could potentially hold the Alsaid until after we play Nessian Wanderer to trigger Constellation. Although we'll have plenty of ways to enable it afterwards, so it's probably fine to be mana efficient. And then turn one Alsa, turn two Wanderer, turn three, most likely Siona. Take it from there. Facing a Rualesk Apex hybrid. So some sort of plus one counter synergy deck, presumably. Gonna be a turn one Gilded Goose, which we can still attack into. Opponent takes it, it's afraid of a combo trick. Incubation Druid for more ramp. So we'll attack and then play Siona second main. Currently missing a card draw engine that finds more spells other than lands. Although we do have a few enchants we can deploy for now. Should be able to take out Cosmina. Now let's see here. So four mana total. If I go Squire's Devotion plus Valor, split up on my one-powered creatures, we guarantee killing Kazmina, which is probably fine here. So I'll give Lifelink to the Wanderer. And there's Rolsk. So now the Incubation Druid makes a lot of mana. What's our plan? Could just Punishment on Rolsk start swinging, which I don't hate.
do have to watch out for blasts soon as well. Can kill my Halsade and Valor. So Incubation Druid now making three mana. Oof, for River's Rebuke, that's effective. And then Siona can go back to her hand as well. At least we're left with a Spirit Token. Alright, we got a rebuild, but we have the technology. So, how about Siona? See what we get. Transformation, Cartouche, yeah, those are some good options. Not gonna be able to take out Incubation Druid this turn with Cartouche. But I might be able to next turn. So kind of like that. And then what else do we want to run out? Yeah, I could also heal its punishments on the incubation druid to slow them down, which I don't hate. And then still play an Alsaid as well. Or I can Valor on the spirit token to attack past the goose. Right, we'll slow down their mana development. And then, gotta try and make our creature big enough to fight Sorolisk, perhaps. Oh, Kiora can untap Incubation Druid to speed up the process. So the Sealy Punishment's not gonna stay around for long. Spectral Steel, a good draw. So, good Spectral Steel and Cartouche. And that still leaves enough mana for Alsaid plus Activates. Sounds good. And then our opponent packs it in. Cartouche can fight Rolask and start pressuring their Planeswalker or just close out the game for us. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Krenko. Which is going to be a tough matchup if we don't have a form of evasion, flying, trample. Do have Satessin Training plus Spirit Dancer. No green mana has the major problem. So if we find green mana, I think this hand is going to be quite strong. Don't expect too much removal from a goblin deck. Yeah, I'll try it. And then hope our Spirit Dancer survives. Don't think I can afford to wait. Instigator. Right on time. And if we want to be mana efficient, we Ancestral Mask here. Also reasonable to leave back Spirit Dancer for a turn in case they have a Goblin Lord. Like a Chieftain. So we take six on the way back. Okay, probably gonna go for Indomitable Will and hope to draw land. We do. And then training seems fine. Are we at risk of dying to Krenko next turn? They play it with haste, makes four goblins, so seven times two is fourteen. So we're not dead. And next turn shelter on reds is gonna be game. So I somehow found ourselves playing Spirit Dancer versus 
goblins in historic brawl, but there you go. Kept a somewhat sketchy hand, but Spirit Dancer, of course, is a reason why. Because it is one of our best cards if it goes unanswered. And Shelter on Reds means no blocking allowed. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Tatiova, so blue-green ramp deck. Uh, this hand is promising, but pretty slow. So we've got our SRAM and Season as card draw engines. A bit land light and not a lot of auras to then actually go off. So I think we take our free mulligan, and this seems better. Turn two we can Vanguard or Signets. Maybe set up Citizen Champion before we play the Sentinel's Eyes. Blessing for removal is useful too in this matchup. Druid class to play extra lanes. Given that we drew our lands, there's an extra argument for playing Vanguard on turn 2. And then next turn, maybe Satustin Champion. Opponent levels up Druid class, plays a land. Alright, hit for 3, play Champion. And next turn we can start deploying our auras. Tatiova we can take out. Alrighty, so... Could go Transcendent, Envoy, which will trigger Champion draw card. Play one mana Blessing, and then Champion getting another counter is enough to kill Tatiova. Sounds pretty good. And there's a chance we draw another land which would be useful too. No land, sadly, but a couple more enchantments we can play on the cheap now, thanks to the Envoy. Scute Swarm, uh-oh. That's gonna be a problem. Wanna get rid of the Swarm as soon as possible. Before uh, Poden makes an army of chum blockers. Now we do have the Alsace to give protection from green to maybe get past it. And uh, Calyx would have been an answer, but we didn't draw the land, so... Now probably want to start putting enchantments on the Envoy to fly over. So we'll kick things off with Conviction. Sentinel's Eyes for Vigilance. And then probably play the Alsade. Keep up Karmetra's Blessing. And attack with the team. Bone's probably still going to take the hit for now. And then try to leverage the Skewed Swarm to take over. So, we could have lethal here between the pro green on champion to get past our blockers and the envoy attacking in the air. Hour of Promise is going to gain them 
some life. And let's see, do they have any deserts in play? Looks like they're going for Field of the Dead instead. So that's gonna make some black creatures with the zombies. So now uh, protection from green doesn't really help anymore. And yeah, the skewed swarms are taking over alongside the zombies. So the aerial plan of Envoy is kind of our last hope. Point this down to one card in hand and two who angelic reward. That could just be game. Reward on champion. It's gonna make things easier. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing off against the Burgi. And our hand's a little on the slow side, but it does feature SRAM, which is exciting, so I'll try it. I think I'm just going to fetch with Evolving Wilds over playing Temple, even though I could scry for an untapped land. It's not like I have a great turn 3 play necessarily. And then I do want to try and keep a land on top. So maybe we can play SRAM and a Cartouche in the same turn to get immediate value. Potent playing a Burgi deck with Ikra Wellspring, so... Not sure what they're planning to do with that, but... Maybe they're trying to combo off by drawing their entire deck in one big turn. SRAM does get answered, sadly. If only we were able to play Cartouche to give it one extra toughness right away. That's okay, we still have Siona. And then probably go with Will over Pacifism. And hope to draw land for Archon. Banner on red. Now Cartouche also an excellent way to take out Burgi. Alright, I would have loved an untapped land to be able to play the white Cartouche before the green one. Now it would be a trade. Although I guess with the one extra power from Banner it would have been a trade regardless since First Strike doesn't apply to fighting. So... I think we just play Face of Divinity then. And then next turn we can try and fight. Possible our opponent would have taken four instead of trading anyways. So they have six mana, Burr game play. Let's see what they can come up with. So, just playing some Artifact Ramp. Could see something like Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, next turn. Which is going to be hard to beat. Champion is tempting. But I think we want to get rid of Burgi while we can. Hope to dodge Ugin. Double casts into light of the stage for card advantage. That's fine. So they get to cast everything they found in this turn and next turn. Alright, opponent's at 18, we have 9, 10 power in play. Don't see a line where we can deal lethal damage this turn. So probably go with champion, leave up, indomitable will at instant speed to maybe save a key creature from a burn spell. Mm, 
and the Versifier threats a little bit. Opponent sacking Mindstone. Still enough mana for Ugin the Spirit Dragon to clean up. But yeah, in a 100 card deck, they're not super likely to find it. Maybe a Star of Extinction can do the same job. It's just gonna be a treasure chest instead. Opponent makes 5 treasure. So 7 mana available. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Gonti, and we've got a keepable hand. Vanguard, not that easy for Mono Black to deal with. The rest taking our Sentinel's Eyes or Calyx. Goes for the Planeswalker. They could have Exile base removal to deal with Vanguard, or something that gives minus X minus X, decreasing its toughness to get past Indestructible. Seder Enchanter will save for next turn alongside Sentinel's Eyes. And then for now I kind of like uh, Siona. And find... Probably the ult that glitters as a cheaper alternative. Can maybe play it for one mana alongside Mystic. Gonti's gonna have a look. They could find one of our pacifism effects for Vanguard, which would be annoying too. So next turn we can go Seder Enchanter plus Sentinel's Eyes. And then... Could put it on Siona to trade. I think I don't want them trading for Gonti, so we'll just go for the Vanguard. And then next turn might be a good time for a Starfield Mystic. Opponent keeps up 3 mana, or 4 mana rather. So they could have something to mess with Vanguard, although Karmatra's Blessing could protect it. Now that doesn't allow me to go Mystic into Glitters and keep a Blessing. So maybe we just play Glitters and then maybe draw into a White Source. with our enchanter. Alright, we did. And then... Yeah, playing Starfield Mystic seems fine. So we'll just send with Vanguard. And we can activate the Vanguard. Right, Sejiri Shelter for protection is acceptable. And play Mystic. Can even play Indomitable Will for one mana now. Massacre Worm, yeah, that is effective. So how about Indomitable Will on Seder Enchanter to save it? Still take a bunch of damage from the Worm, including one more trigger from Siona. But it seems worth it. Alright, hopefully we can find a source of life gain soon. Kick things off with Cartouche. Sigil could be powerful. We'll have to go shields down to cast it, which is probably not acceptable. So we hit with Vanguard, 
play Selfless Savior. And pass it back. At least we have a 7 powered first striker on defense now to hold off Gonti meter golem. Targeting one of our enchantments maybe. I think it's going for the all that glitters. Yep. That one we cannot protect with blessing. So yeah, that works. Vanguard only 3 power now. Still enough to hold off Gonti. Don't think the opponent's sending in Massacre Worm. All right, we can try to take over with Sigil now. Vanguard still hits for five. Conti trumps, so they can replay it. Pass it back. Ooh, Liliana. It's gonna make me sack two creatures, most likely. Or they can start making zombies to just draw cards after jumping Vanguard. It also works. Rise and shine. So we need to find a flying enchantment, or we can just get there with a the sigil, of course. Alright, so what are we thinking? Knightly Valor, probably still on Vanguard. Could diversify, put it on the Seder Enchanter, for instance. Or we can play CO9 in the hopes of finding a cheap enchantment, but if we don't, I wouldn't be able to make an Angel with Sigil, which we need to pressure Liliana. So I think it's just Valor. And then maybe, yeah, put it on the Seder Enchanter, which I can still make indestructible if needed. Compulsory rests. Could take out a blocker. So let's say we put it on the zombie token. Or I could put it on the meter golem, I guess. And then maybe force a chump from the massacre worm. Alright, so we can use a savior to make it indestructible, key blessing, which is a bit more versatile in case they have targeted exile base removal for Vanguard. And do take two from the Massacre Worm on the way out. But at least the Massacre Worm's gone now. And hopefully Blessing is enough to survive. Something like Shadow's Verdict would be backbreaking. Professor Onyx we can handle. Gets rid of my Seder Enchanter. That's fine. Could also use Blessing to increase someone else's power to maybe uh, save us, but it doesn't seem necessary. Alright, we are down to 4 life. Pun makes us sack two creatures. A little death never hurt. But we can clean up the planeswalkers now. Do we have enough for lethal by any chance? Doesn't look like it. So, yeah. Angels take out Planeswalkers. Vanguard goes face. Small chance they have a Fatal Push to punish me and save a Planeswalker, but I don't think they do. And then I probably hang on to Paradise Road. P 
here into the abyss targeting themselves. Okay. Is their opponent going to go out in style or do they actually have a plan? Two mana. They seem pretty dead. Maybe Dark Ritual into something can still save them. Alright, just a Maze Mind Tome and our opponent explodes. Alright, so we got to defeat Mono Black Control. So yeah, our Green-White Enchantment deck is pretty fun. Don't always cast CO9 every game. If we find one of our better card draw engines like SRAM, Spirit Dancer, Satessan Champion or Seder Enchanter, we can leverage those instead. But CO9 is a nice way to kind of refuel, give us a bit of board presence, find more enchantments, keep the ball rolling. So even in a late game against a more controlling strategy, we still have more ways to get on the board. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.